Good. Hello everybody, this is JJ. Welcome back to the ASUS ROG YouTube channel. Today we've got something pretty cool. As you can see, we've got a whole bunch of components here spread out in our system. And what we're gonna be doing is going to be doing a little bit of an overview on how to build a balanced and optimized Z68 system. So this is the first part of the video that's essentially gonna be an introduction on the components that we're gonna be utilizing and some kind of a little bit of diving into why we've picked the components that we have picked and what's kind of unique about some of the aspects of the component tree that we're going to be utilizing in this build. Uh, in addition to this, I've gone ahead and brought along one of my cohorts here from the ASUS family, Mr. Chaynor. He's going to be kind of uh, going through me in this process of explaining what we got going on here and asking us some questions. Oh, well, thanks, JJ. Uh, so uh, let's dive right into it. Um, so I can see that we have a P8Z68 Deluxe board here. Mm -hmm. um, why don't you go ahead and explain to me and the users out there uh, what kind of uh, motherboard is this and, and, and more specifically, what kind of advantages does it give me as a desktop user in the building? Yeah, definitely. Um, Z68 is a brand new chipset, just launched this actually this month. Um, and it doesn't actually replace H67 or P67. It's more so of a SKU that's kind of meeting uh, functionality from two different chipsets and kind of bringing them, amalgamating them together and giving us a new level of functionality and versatility. On H67, you pretty much were mostly running the iGPU. You did, of course, have the ability to go ahead and run a discrete graphics card. And you did have the ability to go ahead and run Intel's QuickSync technology, which had no overclocking ability on the platform. You couldn't run overclock memory and you couldn't over, overclock any other one of the K series parts. So it was great for a stock user, but for a more enthusiast user, it's a little bit limited. P67 was really an enthusiast user's just dream come true. Crazy overclocking ability, you know, multi GPU support, you know, SATA 6G, RAID support, USB 3, you know, Crossfire SLI, you got everything that you wanted to. But for some of the users that wanted to be able to access the QuickSync technology, they weren't able to access it. They were, uh, you know, you could still get better than CPU performance by using CUDA and doing transcoding on your GPU, but you couldn't get the advantage of running the QuickSync technology that was now available. So now Z68 kind of allows us some new level of functionality. What we're gonna be able to do is take all the aspects that we had with H67 and P67, we bring those together, but we're gonna be adding the ability to have access to the iGPU and to a discrete graphics card and actually have simultaneous usage. So I could go ahead and be playing my game, you know, so let's say, you know, Crisis 2, capping people online, having fun, and then at the same time, I could actually be doing a transcode in the background with almost no performance penalty. So that's a really cool feature. In addition to that, Intel's also now added a new technology called RST caching or smart response technology. And this utilizes uh, two really uh, nice features. So we have an SSD and a mechanical hard drive, and it's able to go ahead and bridge those two together to give you superior performance. It's a lot of stuff. Well, uh, you know, let's uh, just go by one by one. So uh, I noticed you mentioned uh, smart response technology, right? Mm -hmm. So uh, it has something to do with the, uh, the SSD. Could you explain to us what smart response technology means for the user? in terms of, you know, those two hard drives, you know, that you have set up. Yeah, definitely. So, I mean, as you can see here, we've got an awesome Western Digital three terabyte hard drive. So, you know, this is a perfect drive to actually go with like our UEFI BIOS, which allows us to get, you know, more than 2.2 terabyte support, right? But if we reduce this as a boot volume, while well, it's got really, really big storage capacity and it's got solid performance, it's a little bit lower in terms of the overall spindle speed. It's not a 7200 RPM hard drive, so not maybe as snappy as we would want. Um, we've got a fantastic Sandforce 2 class F40 SSD, so super fast performance, high read, high write performance, really low access times, it's great. But it's only 40 gigabytes, and you know, all of us would love to run a 260 gig, 256 gigabyte SSD, but that's a lot of money, right? right. Um, so what we're able to do is with this smart response technology, we can actually merge the two. Uh, we can take this drive and dedicate it as a cache for the actual operating system. And what it will do is it will actually monitor applications and the usage patterns of users and cache those functions. So what that ultimately translates into is one, you could have faster boot times. Two, you could have faster actually loading of games or, or applications. Um, you know, if you're running a lot of uh, web pages, you know, in terms of, you know, you're, you've got your web browser open, you're running 10 different tabs and you're doing a lot of different stuff, you're gonna get better access and better performance day in and day out just from your general system. And the, the real big benefit is, is that you're gonna go ahead and be able to have just complete transparency. Normally, with an SSD, when you run it, if you were to run this with a mechanical hard drive, you got a C and you got a D drive. Now that's great because you get 100% pure performance from the SSD, absolute fastest level. And that would be true on H67 or P67 uh, or, or other chipsets as well, but you're gonna have to micromanage. 
Now with the RST technology, you're gonna be able to go ahead and essentially just have one single volume and install everything to it and not necessarily have to worry about the two. And you're not gonna get 100% of that performance, but you're gonna get a pretty high level of that, uh, that improved read performance for your system. Great, great. Uh, so that covers smart response technology. Um, now, moving on, I uh, noticed you mentioned something about uh, QuickSync technology. Now, could mm -hmm. you explain just a little more in depth? I see that we have a GTX 560 card, very respectable video card here. Mm -hmm. And you were talking about Crisis 2 and uh, uh, transcoding video. Just try to uh, give us like a usage scenario or explain to us more in depth what QuickSync really brings to the user. Yeah, well, I know for you, Chainor, you personally, you love to cat people online <laughs> and you love to record those videos, upload them on YouTube, you know, and brag about, you know, your, your kill rate and your kill count, right? Yep. Um, but, you know, those videos after you, you've done, uh, save them on your system, you know, they, they could be, you know, multiple gigabytes, right? And right. if you want to go ahead and upload that online, you got to slow upload, that could take quite a bit of time. Or if you want to put that on your phone, maybe you don't got four gigs worth of space, right? So the cool thing is that with this new virtual technology that we feature on our Z68 series of products, is that the user can go ahead and be, you know, playing their game at one time, but at the same exact time, they can now be accessing the fixed function chip uh, that's built onto the Sandy Bridge series of processors and access the transcoding technology. This is going to allow them to really cut down the amount of time the transcoding process occurs and allow them to go ahead and output a significantly smaller file size. So they could drop it down from let's say like four, you know, four gigs all the way down to maybe, you know, like 500 megabytes. And that's much easier to either transfer over your phone or, or much easier to go ahead and upload online. And the, the biggest really cool part is there's almost no impact on performance. Oh, that's feature close to my heart. Yeah. So um, I can see that we have these other components here. Mm -hmm. uh, why don't you go ahead and explain to us, uh, you see the Cor Corsair AX850. Explain to us uh, what kind of part this is and what it does for us. Yeah, definitely. I mean, you know, uh, we've got our, our PSU, our power supply in our system, as well as we've got this fantastic Corsair 600T chassis. You know, along with the power supply, these are two components that sometimes get overlooked by a lot of users and they sometimes go with the, the cheaper part that's available. But they're a part that you generally don't want to sacrifice on first and foremost because they're going to probably be in your build uh, longer than almost anything else. Most users generally keep a chassis along with their power supply for you know upwards of uh, three, four, sometimes even five years. They take it a long way. So you really want to pick a chassis that's going to have a lot of flexibility and room to grow. So with this chassis that we have here from Corsair, it's really amazing. I mean it's just flat out, one, it's gorgeous, right? I mean it's, it's this white on, on white and black design. But then when you talk about actually about what's on the inside, just like our motherboards where we pride ourselves you know, on the UEFI, our design aspects, our quality, we've got a lot of functionality here. Look at this amazing option for cable management ability. You can go ahead and run everything and make sure that it's clean, effective, you don't got any wires exposed and you can ensure optimal airflow. In addition to that, you know, you've got some really cool features like you can pop off the panels here on the top, on the, on the front to be able to clean, uh, clean everything, minimize any type of dust buildup. You've got USB 3 for the front header. You've got a you know killer, you know, side panel with a little bit of a window there, so you can see your tricked out system once you got everything set up in there. So really nice setup overall. So it's a it's great to grow with. And of course, you have full ability to go ahead and set this up for you know uh, SLI configurations if that, that's something that you're interested in. And the AX850 comes into play in terms of being something that's going to power your entire system. We want a quality PSU that's going to be efficient, which this is. This is a gold series power supply, so that means 90% plus efficiency. It's fully modular, so that means I don't have to worry about any type of excess of cables. So I only need as many cables as I want. And also because of that high level of efficiency, I get a big big boon as well because it's essentially almost going to run near silent in most situations if the fan's going to turn on at all. So I can take advantage of you know, our DirectCU design, which is a really optimal airflow design, very quiet. Take advantage of this, take advantage of this, and I'm going to have a really high-end system that's going to be very quiet. So those two, those two components are uh, definitely very important to making up our build. Great, great. All right, moving on then. Uh, so uh, we have an audio card. Now, why don't you tell me how specifically this helps me kill people on crisis too. Oh yeah, man, you know, audio is an overlooked, you know, aspect when it comes to builds. A lot of people go with the integrated audio and systems and definitely here at ASUS, you know, we take our pride in terms of putting quality codecs on there and you're going to get good sound here. But, you know, for 30 bucks more, you get a much, much, much better level of sound. It's going to be more immersive, 
better detailing, better positional audio, uh, louder volume levels. Uh, you've got a dedicated headphone amplifier on here so that when you're a gamer, you strap that on, you're gonna be able to hear just better detailing, better positioning, and overall just better clarity so that you know when you hear somebody creeping up on you, bam, you can turn around you and cap that guy before he did you up your kill count, right? I mean, that's that's what we want to do, right? We want to be the best, right? So, you know, this is an awesome part. You know, we uh, give you also the ability to do a little bit of customization. You could swap out the op amp on there, you know, get a little bit better quality if you're looking for that. You still are able to use the front audio connectors from your chassis. We built that still onto the card, so you still get a lot of functionality there. Awesome, awesome. So uh, uh, we have three components here. Mm -hmm. One is the uh, 2500. Uh, the, uh, let's talk about the one, actually let's talk about both these components. So you have the CPU here and you have the H60 Corsair. Yeah. Explain to, to a little bit what those are. So we went ahead and we went with the 2500K because we really think it's like the awesome bang for the buck part. You know, you've got the K-series part which means it's an unlocked multiplier so that we can go ahead and overclock this, you know, 46, 47, 48 in terms of multiplier. That means 48, uh, 4.8 gigahertz or maybe even higher but uh, to go with that we definitely need a really good quality cooler to be able to make sure and keep our temperatures low but we also want to be able to have a quiet system even when we're overclocked so the H60 is going to be able to take advantage of that it's a closed loop system it's got its micro finning on there it's a great quality build configuration it's really going to be able to take care of the job and ensure that we got strong TDPs and you know it works really well with you know, this combination of the 2500K, this CPU, and our boards, it's fantastic. Whether you're a manual overclocker and you're going to be doing it straight within the UEFI and you're hardcore and you know how to configure all your options, or whether you're going to use, you know, our TPU technologies like auto-tuning or the TPU switch for really quick and easy high-level overclocking, you know, you're going to get the job done. Awesome. Awesome. Yeah. Uh, so now we have the Corsair Vengeance 8 gigabytes. Mm -hmm. uh, Explain to yeah. us what that is. System memory, of course, is paramount. You know, we even with this RS, uh, RST technology where we're going to have an immediate cache, memory is the immediate point where things are getting cached from within your operating system. So you want a high enough density so that you're not going to necessarily have to hit the hard drive if you don't absolutely need to. And you want to be able to have enough bandwidth to be able to drive and, and not have a bottleneck in your system. So we went with Corsair's um, Vengeance Kit here, DDR3 1600. So that's overclocked to go along with our overclocked part in terms of the CPU. Cas8, so we got that nice tight latency to give us better efficiency, and then even lower voltage. It's only 1.5 volts, so it's even going to be running cooler to kind of go with the whole theme of keeping an effective and efficient system. So you know, eight gigabytes matching around with the rest of the system. It's a really great combination. Effective and efficient and powerful, but yeah. not just powerful, also quiet as well. So it doesn't. Yeah, definitely. Disturb definitely. your roommates. Yeah, I mean, some of those higher end kits, you know, you might have to worry about sometimes using, you know, larger dedicated RAM cooler type designs, uh, you know, and that's going to add a little bit more noise to the system as well. But definitely because we're running at that lower voltage as well, we don't need to worry about that. It's going to run cool and effectively. Yeah. Definitely something to look into. Um, so, and the final components here? Our ODD, man. You know, sometimes ODD gets <clears throat> left out, but, you know, it's a key component to your system. You know, some people are definitely uh, doing installations off of USB flash drives or they're using Steam to download their games, but, you know, we still know a lot of people uh, use these drives to go ahead and install their operating systems, burn CDs, burn BDs, do a lot of different things. So we've got two different drives. We've got our 8X combo drive, excuse me, our 12X, uh, brand new 12X combo drive. So this gives us the ability to read Blu-ray discs. I love 1080p video, you know, sorry, Netflix doesn't cut it for me. It's too low quality. So I want my Blu-ray, I want my high quality, and I'm gonna be able to do that. But I've also got the ability that if I wanna make, you know, backup copies for my CDs, I wanna do some burns, whatever I want, that gets me covered. For the more enthusiast user, we've got our brand new 12X BD writer. So this is an awesome drive because it gives us even more functionality. Maybe, you know, you've got a nice high quality, high megapixel camera, you got a DSLR, maybe a camcorder, you've got, you know, big files, you know, 10, 20, maybe even more than 25 gigabytes worth of data. You can definitely always back that up to an external hard drive, but the flexibility you're gonna be able to take, you know, your your dedicated memories and, and, and your critical files and be able to create a hard copy of it that you can just put away and not have to worry about some type of mechanical failure on a hard drive, that's great. So that's giving us a whole another level of functionality. So we've got two great drives to chew with. And we've also got special design engines in here, keeping in the whole theme with one to keep quiet, where we've optimized the internal mechanisms to be quiet, not only when the drives uh, spin up, but during the installation and the read-through process, so you don't get these drives that are going and just creating these kind of whirling sounds in your system. Amazing. Uh, well, uh, you know, it's hard for me to believe that a system this powerful can ever be really be quiet, but uh, I guess, uh, why don't you just tell our users a preview of what's coming up next, and as I understand it, 
this is all going in there. Yep. And you're going to show us how it's going to be done, right? Yep, that's definitely true. So, um, you know, we're going to be putting together the system piece by piece and we're going to let you guys actually see as everything comes together. Uh, the baseline for our platform we're going to be choosing is the Pro here. We're going to be spotlighting uh, the GTX 560 part, but we'll also be doing some benchmarking with the higher end GPUs as well as some uh, potential SLI configurations. And the rest of the parts you can see here is what we're going to be utilizing in our base configuration inside this 600T. So definitely stay tuned to the uh, ASUS ROG YouTube channel. Leave us any questions, comments, concerns. If you guys want anything specifically featured in terms of the customization, the setup, guides, whatever, let us know. Lastly, check out ASUSROG.com uh, forward slash forums where you can leave us any questions or comments as well. Thank you.